Barakmor in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit one true god amen welcome to the contemplating one year of uruho the way at the outset let me thank god almighty for the entire providence and blessings that is showered upon the experience of uruho the way throughout the last one year as it is a virtual platform for the study of the syriac orthodox spirituality the tradition of the church its liturgy its dogma and many other aspects of the church we are thankful to all of you for being with us for the past one year and i welcome one and all for this show and at this time we the urho team are grateful to one and all and at the same time we are so overwhelmed to be a part of this day's milestone experience because of the presence of our chief guest and i don't want to just say the name right now but i want to just give you a brief account of our today's great personality with us we have a great spiritual father with us today who hails from the very same legacy and tradition of parmela thirumeni and having exposed in the spiritual life of the same tradition the same person has taken his monastic vow in the early age of his life and also as he hails from the place of mulanturuti which is a traditional and a historic place of the sri kartalak church in india and with the tradition and legacy of the antiochian church and the person has come into the ladder of the church as a simple person as a person with complete spirituality and a call from god almighty and as a deacon as a priest and as a metropolitan he comes into the picture of the whole life and showed way to many people around the world had his education in various places of the world and completed theological education and other educations secular educations for its highs for bringing his folks into the right path for the glory of god and we are thankful to god that even today he he is is into the position of maybe god has blessed him to put the position of the 25th malangara metropolitan metropolitan trustee of the jacobite syrian church of the syriac orthodox church the universal syrian orthodox church and i am sure that by this time the entire audience globally now would know who the person is he is his eminence more gregorius joseph metropolitan the metropolitan trustee of the malangara jacobite syrian orthodox church of the universal church and now with a humble heart and the the whole team on behalf of the entire urho team i welcome your remnants more gregorius joseph metropolitan emits the celebration of one year uruho journey welcome dirimini welcome thank you very much thank you very much god bless you all thank you dirimini for finding time with us today and it is a great pleasure to to uh, to spend time with you as a person who is so uh, busy in these days especially who is trying to help many people in india who are going through the difficult time of covid-19 but still you found time to spend with your children who are taking up the surya church and its studies seriously i just wish to give a brief introduction about our church and wish to to listen from you you have bishop uh, your eminence uh, about 
your take on our church and its studies. And therefore, let me just briefly introduce what is Oracle to us. Last year, when we had uh, a time to think of bringing our Suryat people and late lay movement together, along with many lay movement, and particularly within the shadow of uh, Haimunukro, and with many leaders of that, we all sat together and thought of starting an English speaking uh, a group of study, a study, uh, a study group to bring about uh, Syriac Orthodox studies across the world. And we were so fortunate to have the blessings from His Eminence Mor Yeldo Titus to start with on the day of the Feast of Pentecost 2020. And now we thought that this will be a, a space to internet-based outreach Christian ministry to disseminate the love of triune God. And the goal of this ministry to explore and imbibe and disseminate the in-depth meaning and also to contextualize our church and its tradition and, and also our academic ministry. And therefore, we, as, as, uh, as uh, your eminence, is, is now heading the church in Malangara with uh, your whole capacity. What is your thought about our academic mission of the church, the church which has to go with the academic mission? And what do you think about the academic mission of the church? Let me thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share some of the thoughts, uh, some of the questions, particularly uh, this year, today, uh, when you celebrate the first year of Orko since it's been uh, published to the public. I haven't, I have heard about this platform. Uh, I was told by people that this is a platform very unique and uh, it's a platform for the scholars and the people uh, come into this platform as guests and uh, as scholars are world-renowned persons and personalities. Uh, from different backgrounds. So being not a scholarly person, <laughs> I was not that uh, taken much interest to get into the platform and see what's happening. So very recently only, I was contacted by our uh, Jacob Joseph Hutchin, a very good friend of mine for so many years even uh, from, from, the, from my uh, ministry in Bangalore itself. So I started going through some of the uh, programs. I was very much impressed. I think it's a very unique platform. As we all know that our church is blessed with a lot of uh, hidden pearls hidden treasures, and it is very difficult to explore it. We should appreciate a lot of scholars' effort to translate all these hidden words into uh, different languages, particularly in English. So this scholarly platform is very much in, very much the need of the power. Since seeing the very old church. We all probably say that Church of Antioch is the mother church, which goes back to Antioch. I don't want to explain all those. So it's a wonderful mission you have taken. I am sure that you people, eminent priests and eminent scholars and laymen from different walks of life taking so much effort in the area of Syriac academic mission. So we, known as Syrian Christians, the importance of Syriac language and the importance of the writings of our fathers are more important. 
not many people know about it. But being a platform widely used by English speaking people all over the globe in this era of mass communication, every contribution is very much appreciable. In this context, I appreciate or for the way that continuously promotes the Sri Orthodox and its tradition to the wider English-speaking world. The amount of work you have carried out for the past one year is commendable. This is a very special platform, as I said. When I have gone through the missionary work that you have carried out through this platform, I understand that it includes it includes prayer, the liturgy, study of fathers, dogmatic, and other areas of spiritual life. And of course, spirituality and spiritual life need to be connected, related to our daily life. In your program, you have invited probably renowned Sri scholars to discuss such topics without any doubt. I would say that such a mission, meaning the church's academic mission, is what we need most in today's world. It is not because that we need to just project this knowledge to the outside world, but it is a time for our people inside as well as to go deep into one's own tradition so that we can easily respect the traditions outside and also bring about many missionaries of the Sriak tradition. We can take the tradition, who can take the tradition to the entire world meaningfully. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Tirimeni, for reflecting uh, on the works that Uroho has done for the past one year. And as you rightly said, you know, the scholarly work is are being reflected. It's not just the scholarly world, but daily prayers, including the Shimo, which is conducted on a daily basis every day in the evening uh, in English uh, and welcoming uh, people from different backgrounds and to taste what this tradition means, what this faith means. Uh, so since Thirumeni has given a highlight uh, on what Oroho has been doing, like, you know, the academic lectures, the symposium and promoting the Surya Christianity um, and uh, the discussion on contemporary issues. One of the things that I would like to uh, reflect upon at this point, um, so we try to strengthen the Oriental Orthodox uh, in um, the, the relationship with other churches because this is not something that we can alone achieve because uh, the the scope of promoting this is wider and uh, we are trying to uh, promote the same faith that is being um, that is being cherished by the apostles uh, by the fathers and mothers of the church the same faith that is being defended and died for and uh, talked about. So we try to have a wider communion with the Oriental Orthodox family. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, uh, give you a glimpse of what the Oroho webpage. Um, and at the same time, I would like to hear from um, our beloved Tirumeni. So your, your take on the communion with other orth Oriental Orthodox churches. It really seems like you are you're on mute.
So, uh, Trimini, can you just reflect upon uh, the need to strengthen um, the communion with other Oriental Orthodox churches? At the same time, you know, the relevance of systematic uh, theological education and, or, you know, promoting the Oriental Orthodox theology. Um, well, as we all understand, our church uh, always stands for the communion of all Oriental churches. And I believe that uh, to a certain extent, the communion with the Oriental churches are all. And of course, the dialogues are going on with some other churches also, the Anglican Church and the Mahatma Church. And of course, uh, Holiness is also engaged in talking uh, to different uh, Christian denominations as well. Our Patriarch, His Holiness, more and more affirm Second Patriarch of Antioch and all the East, works for the unity and communion of all the churches in this regard. And incidentally, I would love to mention that today is Morayan's seventh enthronement year. So let us uh, congratulate and wish Morayan Patriarch the very best to lead our church with much glory to the entire world where we are uh, spreading in different countries. We all know that the time is not good, and Holiness also is going through a lot of difficult time, and Church in India also is going through some tough time, as we all know that. So let us pray for Moran Patriarch while we are praying and uh, wishing Moran the very best uh, in his ministry as the Supreme Head of our Universal Syrian Orthodox Church. We may have learned from the media that the mind of a patriarch that is forward, looking forward to having more closer relationship with all the churches and even people of different walks of life. And our church originated in Antioch and spreading all over the uh, Middle East, in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, uh, Jerusalem, in all these areas, we know that there are a lot of Muslim population as well. It is always engaging in a lot of discussion with the Muslim brothers, and we have even learned from his scholarly speeches and interactions and meeting with different religious heads of different religion and all. So we can read the mind of our audience. In Malankara to be to follow the same path of relationship with other churches. India is a religiously pluralistic country. Uh, significantly, India being a multicultural and religious community, we always try to keep our relationship with all the churches, and people outside the church, and religion, other religions also, with utmost respect and care. Our policy is to have good relationship with other Christian denominations and have a closer intercommunion with churches just who could agree each other with full communion and all. We have we do have a, some kind of agreement with the Catholic Church. So when we all have the meetings of different Christian denominations, the pain of not having the full communion of the body and blood of our Christ Jesus is still remain. So it's a prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ that we all may be one. So 
So hope, hope and pray that one day there will be a kind of reconciliation with all the different Episcopal churches all over the world and have more closer relationship and a communion to Leslie mentioned in the outset, uh, Oriental Orthodox churches do have a closer relationship. There is no doubt about that. And I think it's being uh, strengthening day by day. And the explanation about uh, the ecumenical relationship, not only within the Oriental Orthodox Church, but with the other churches, and even outside the churches with other religions and a multicultural society. It's a great hope for all of us. And I think this answer would lead us to, uh, to one of your words that as you said at the very beginning about interpreting our church and its faith, and even our church fathers and mothers, their writings into the, into the contemporary world. I think if you uh, if you have noticed our programs, we have uh, very carefully designed our programs in such a way that our early the theology of the early fathers are are said to the public, and we are not leaving it over there. As your eminence have rightly said, we are trying to explain it into contemporary world. For example, uh, when we deal with some of the theological contributions of the fathers, we do believe that fathers are not dead. They live even today. They can speak today. They can speak to the context today. As your eminence rightly said, there are a lot of issues going on around the world, in the Middle East, in India, and everywhere. And definitely the fathers and mothers, their writings, and even today they can speak through us. And how do you think, Tirimini, that these things can be happen? What is your opinion about uh, the theology to be taken into today's context? Well, uh, any any scholarly work, um, I don't know if it is it's a fitting word to mention this Holy Father's writing a scholarly work. So it's unparalleled work, the, the writings. So there is a divine providence and uh, we believe that it's from above. When we, when we go in depth to the writings of the early fathers. So when, when we have all these precious writings of early fathers and early centuries, centuries it, is, it is meant to our daily life and it is meant to be contextualized in today's world, today's society, today's church, today's entire scenario of different walks of life. Even though our church is so rich with theological, liturgical and spiritual text, they are mostly contained only in churches or in monasteries. So it has to come out of that. From the early part of the 20th century, Western scholars found its importance and richness, which is very, very uh, important. I remember when we had a, a meeting of Focolare bishops in Germany, and we were three, four bishops from our church. So one Lutheran bishop in Germany, who is head of the Lutheran church in Germany, so he was uh, talking about the richness of our church. When we say rich, first thing coming to our mind is that the delicious buildings and the enormous worldly rich and things like that. But he was saying that the beautiful liturgy and its theological interpretation and its heritage and the way we carry it, we, 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 we traveled spiritually with this liturgy and with this precious faith and tradition. He said it's very magical and it's very uh, precious. 
And he even said that, I mean, and Bishop even said, no other church can claim such a treasure. So that's how some of the churches look at us and see our uh, church's century old uh, writings and inscriptions. They tried to preserve a large volume of Syriac texts, and some of them were translated into English. However, there's a large corpus of materials to be translated, interpreted, and given to the next generation. And as far as I understand, there are so many translations being done to Latin, German language, and in French, in, in French, and in different languages too. So many works has been done in uh, in, in German, German language. That's what I was told by uh, His Eminence Lord Titulus Kuriakos. So it is for the English-speaking diaspora. Uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great thing that we could uh, read and contemplate and meditate on uh, these writings in English, which is a great, great thing. Syriac tradition is unique and it should be preserved and also be shared. Many a time people think that the writings of the church fathers are not significant to today's world. I think that need to be corrected. I think this platform, uh, this platform could definitely be used to change that mindset. As you said, fathers are not dead. That is uh, a great, uh, greatest um, expression. They are not dead. These saints are still alive. So they can even talk to us today. That is what we should try to hear. When we read and uh, when we go deep into the readings, we should hear them talk to us. That is what we should all try to attain. And I hope and pray that this platform will be able to encourage people to read more about these Holy Fathers and about Syriac traditions. And uh, through this, I believe that our fathers will talk to us in today's life realities and we all will be able to contextualize what they were trying to say to us and which is relevant to all centuries whenever the world exists. Like when we say that the word of God will remain as it is, whatever happens, whatever changes happens in the world, the word of God will remain as such. So we need the right interpretation of their texts and they should be shared among people uh, in a wider perspective. Um, thank you, Trimeni, for reflecting on uh, the patristic um, symphony, like uh, the fathers are not dead, they are still speaking to the, uh, the contemporary world and we need to contextually read and understand and disseminate um, the, those writings and those reflections. And one of the key things that we always uh, cherish is the simplicity of the Syriac Christianity. Um, Syriac Christianity is unique in its simplicity rather than um, the Greek or the Western Latin world. Syriac Christianity uh, is more down to earth, more related to uh, people's life. So, we have different symposiums on symposium on St. Severius of Antioch, uh, symposium and lecture series on Philexinos of Mabug, or when we, we, we have a discussions or interview with the prominent Syriac scholars like Susan Harvey or Robert Kitchen. So one of the key things that, we, that always comes to our mind is the simplicity. And in Malankara, what happened is like Syriac is being preserved as a liturgical language. And that has putting the simplicity, this, the, the, the core essence of Syriac Christianity to 
the Malankara tradition. Uh, so a simple spirituality that everyone can follow rather than a monastic, um, just limited to monastic life, limited to monastic life. Um, so many of our church fathers and mothers, you know, they, they had a secular uh, life in the sense they have a simple life. They were trying to do something like they were potters, they were carpenters. So uh, fishermen and, you know, those are the kind of things and they have their, their normal daily life. And at the same time, they try to uh, move on in a spiritual realm. So Tirumeni, what is your take on, what is your reflection on this simplest, simplest, simple uh, Syriac Christianity? Um, yes, uh, comparing to the Western Christian tradition of rational thinking, Syriac spirituality is more a kind of simple thinking or living. I should be. We've got to look into that where we are. That is a different scenario. This attitude is found in the very approach to the Bible. If you know, if you know the name of the Bible that the Sikh community carries, you will understand that it is known as Shifa, Shifa Bible, which means simple in all the characteristics of the Sikh tradition. You see, this simple attitude that is very appreciable. As he said, so it, spirituality is meant to lead a simple spiritual life. It is not to be limited within the church or liturgical community, but to share among the people outside as well. In my opinion, our people are trained in such a way that they follow a simple life in their day-to-day -day life. The people in the Middle East, they have been thrown out from their own homeland. They have undergone many adverse situations in their life. Still, they hardly retaliate, but simply follow a life of calmness wherever they are replaced or migrated. I remember one time when I visited our late patriarch, God bless his soul, Ignatius Saka Ivas. And when we were having a discussion, very cordial discussion, a phone call uh, came from Iraq uh, in that uh, one of the priests head was chopped and uh, it placed in the chest of the body of that priest. And uh, that terrible moment, I, I tried to uh, recollect. And Moran Petria was, at that time, a lot of atrocities against the Christian communities were going on. This is one incident. And Warren was very upset. And uh, I tried to share the agony and the, and the difficult time of people going through. But what struck in my mind is after a long silence, our late patriarch told me that, do you know what Christ said? He said, if you are persecuted in one town or village, you go to the next place, the next town. This is what our people in those areas did. All these years, they were being under severe persecution. And they migrated to different countries. They moved into different places. And we have seen the visuals, our priests were celebrating Holy Kurogo in, in the wilderness where nobody could notice them. These are the realities we are facing. I think this spirituality must be shared with the entire world so that world will be experienced 
and everlasting peace. But it's not easy. In the Middle East, uh, this, this is being happening by a group of people. Uh, we know that what they are aiming at. I don't want to mention anything about that. Uh, hope they will change their mind one day. Uh, but in, in India also, we are facing issues even from our, our own brothers. I don't want to get into that either, because if I open that chapter, I may have a lot of things to do, a lot of things to say. Uh, but our people, uh, in, in the midst of losing everything, the world witnessed, the Kerala community witnessed, thrown out of the church, and they started worshipping our God. They, 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 they recited this liturgy, they did the Kurobo on in the street because there is no place. Can't construct a church in within no time. So people people with their spirituality. When we say the spiritual, the simple spirituality, I think in the in the middle of losing everything, we we find this the spiritual moment in the temporary places we construct to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the spirituality, and I have, we have so many ex extra examples to. Uh, to, to, to witness. So when, uh, when I when I went one place uh, far away from Kodamangalam, I forgot the name of that place. What is the name of that place? That Kodamangalam. I I forgot that name. Uh, they tried to build a new church, <laughs> and uh, the other group is not allowing them to build a new church. Because they are obstructing, they are objecting to the officials and all. Because they bought a new new land and trying to uh, construct a new church. And I was there to uh, celebrate the um, annual festival. And, and it's a temporary shed, like a cattle shed, just like a cattle shed. And. After the Holy Kurbana, I was totally comfortable in spite of all these inconveniences and all. But I realized the Spirit of God really present. When I looked at the people, after all this suffering and all, their eyes were glittering, their face were glowing. Of course, tears were coming out from their, uh, from their eyes. But they were happy. They were spiritually nourished. Accomplishment, I could realize. This kind of spirituality, I think that is very much important, more than anything else. So I believe and pray that the way our forefathers, our early fathers taught us and brought these lessons from their experiences and I think it's much relevant in today's world. And I'm sure that this uh, effort by eminent person uh, definitely bear fruit. And, uh, and, the, and, and as a church, definitely uh, we will be benefited from different aspects around the world. Thank you, Dhirmeni, for, for, for sharing the touching stories of the simple spirituality and life of the Surya Orthodox Church in general, and in particular to the Indian context. I think we have come across or maybe have covered about our church's relationship, ecumenical relationship, and also we have covered about our theology and our need for interpreting it in the contemporary world, and then moved 
we with uh, we have come to the uh, to the stage of expressing about a christian spirituality in particular the sri spirituality or probably what we called as the simple spirituality thank you for sharing all these thoughts but now we are coming to uh, another important area of uh, the sri orthodox church or probably i would say that is the foundation or maybe the stem uh, the key thing of the of the church which is our liturgy even in the in the 20th century most of the orthodox churches would take up this liturgy as the key term and key experience to explain about orthodoxy and its mission and therefore i thought this would be a great question just to uh, listen from your uh, your mouth or your eminence that how do we look at our liturgical life and our church and especially when we promote the liturgy and tradition uh, within the church and how do we be able to promote this outside the church and make our church as a, a missionary uh, church and therefore the question very simple question is how do we uh, look at the liturgical life of the church and why what what should we do uh, to continue with this legacy not only as to just cherish the legacy but as an experience of our simple spirituality and also to continue the mission of the church through spirituality and the liturgy what do you think about it your minutes the i think the answer to this question is purely related to uh, previous answer in fact the liturgy is a source through which one obtain the simple life of faith in the sri orthodox tradition all the liturgical prayers including shema prayers shema namaskar are the best example for that of course as you said most of these liturgical prayers are still to be open to the entire world i'm told there is a lot of energy and time dedicated to this course by our clergy youth and other lay movements this is to be highly appreciated At the same time, it is important for us to have consolidated work in this regard. Our church is lucky enough to have many experts in these areas, not only from the clergy but also from laity. I hope and pray that we will have a wonderful time sharing these talents together under one umbrella of our church. Now let me let us hope that this. platform will nourish encourage and motivate as such a life um thank you three many uh, so just to add to what you said like uh when it comes to urho we always uh, cherish the mission aspect of the church like how the church can be a mission church which the church is supposed to be um, and those who are participating in its ministry are called evangelist or evangelists of uroho missionaries of uroho and there is a lot of emphasis on laity leadership and uh, as you can see uh, uroho is again um, a part of or being promoted by the laity leadership so we have our bindo paul who is uh playing a key role who is coordinating everything and we have dr jobin chako we have deacon basil paul we have uh, marine thomas who these are all the people who spend a lot of time and energy to be an evangelist to be an evangelist of uroho uh, to disseminate the love of god and maybe in a wider perspective like you know we all a part of the laos like people of god including the clergy including uh, those who are not clergy so everyone need to work together towards the mission of spreading the love of god from the life and witness of the syriac orthodox church and one of the thing that i would like to mention is um the uh, the, the project called walking the way with saints uh, there were so many laity across the globe participated in this uh in in this project of uroho like they who are the fathers and mothers of church let's find out 
by studying a saint um, um, in, in togetherness. And, you know, we invited volunteers and there were many people across the globe, not just from the Malankara tradition, but from other Oriental Orthodox, even from Protestant tradition, they joined uh, this mission and they just tried to study uh, a saint and then they presented this. Uh, and you can see there is a lot of participation from the laity. And one of the things that I would like to introduce is a book named uh, Project for uh, Orthodox Renewal. Uh, so this is, again, a laity initiative uh, in the US. Uh, so there are seven studies in the key areas uh, of uh, facing Orthodox Christians in America. So this is how the Eastern Orthodox churches are taking up the renew renewal is not a term that we uh, the the traditional churches use, uh, maybe more charismatic or maybe Protestant, but the church also needs some renewal from its institutional face. And how do you see? How can we collaborate or get more participation from the laity to renew the church and to collaborate in togetherness to work towards the mission of the church? It's a very uh, relevant question. It's relevant in all aspects for the existence and also the development of our church. Um, I think it's that, that, that phrase, renovation, renewal, is the right phrase. Um, I think ours is mainly uh, mainly led by the ordained ministry. I think ordained ministry and their responsibilities, their ministerial, evangelical, and uh, all uh, services has its own limitations to reach out to the people uh, in grassroots level. It's not very easy. So I think I have mentioned that the importance of the laity being missionaries of the church is important. There are uh, many areas uh, the ladies are involved. Actually, in, in India, in Kerala, uh, I would, I am, I'm proud to say that by introducing the family units in, in our church. Uh, that was a revolutionary change happened in our ministry in Kerala. Because that consolidated smaller groups and lay people, lay men and women, youth, boys and girls, and elderly people, they are leading the group, leading in prayer, leading with meditation, leading with uh, thoughts, and in so many ways, these small, smaller groups started uh, going depth to the church, the faith matters, Bible, and the practice of the church, the need of the church. And they started thinking of the, 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 the revival and the renewal of the church in total. But there are, there are areas we, we need to look into it. I think we need to have some kind of liturgical renewal as well. So we need to have a lot of study in this area. So when we go in depth, with the renewal uh, agenda, I, I'm sure that there will be more space for the lady, men and women, youth and children to participate in such a way that they could be part of the mission and evangelism. This was a, uh, there was a time when, when, when people thought that the ordained clergy were the only group assigned to proclaim the good news to the world. I think that has changed. The time has come 
that Our Lady is very much equipped with our faith and the just liturgical life. I know many of our lay leaders who are very good in the Syriac language and also the doctors of the church as well. It should be our combined effort to work for the kingdom of God. Like or Paul, I have seen many other social platforms that our clergy and the laity share their talents for the betterment of the church. I'm aware that one of our church's important and immediate task is to bring people of similar, similar vision together and officially entrust them the responsibility of such ministry so that they will also carry out their share of church's mission responsibility. Thank you, Tirumini, for this wonderful vision that you've shared with us. I think it is again a time for us to slightly shift our thought about our mission and uh, laity uh, from, the, from our homeland to our diaspora community as well. I think this is, this is one of the reasons why uh, some of us, uh, you know, as I said at the beginning, along with uh, the uh, mission that is carried out by the Haimunuto, probably tried to, to exchange our views and started this movement uh, just to, to see that how we can disseminate this mission to the outside, uh, our own outside context of our own homeland, to the diaspora community. And this is one of the challenges that I believe that uh, uh, we would like uh, you, uh, to listen from you, how you think about it. The, the, the context is the future of our mission uh, probably is also not only in the homeland, but then the uh, in the diaspora communities. The churches is not anymore a local one, but ra rather it becomes a global one. And even in the global communities, first, second and third generation uh, diaspora communities are going on with their faith and their mission uh, across the globe. And I'm pretty sure that having known about your eminence, you, your eminence have been traveling and also ministering across the world in many dioceses and in, in, uh, as, as a metropolitan, as a vicar uh, outside Kerala. And therefore, you know what is the context and, 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 and the experience of the people outside Kerala and outside India and even in the other uh, contexts. And therefore, I think it is a very relevant question from our mind that how can we link them together in the same heritage at the same time, acknowledging our contextual differences. Because we are all, I too work in the, among the youth in the Australian diocese, and I used to work in the US diocese, and even I was in the outside Kerala diocese. And everywhere we have seen a new set of people. And how do we relate with these people? And what is, what is your vision, Thirumeni, about, about these groups? Yes, uh, it's, it's an important, a point to be discussed, I must say that. Uh, let me recall one incident. When I was doing my study in Trinity College, Dublin, I used to go to London uh, to start a, a small congregation there. And I was fortunate enough to start it in uh, 1988 88 or 89. Um, at, at that time, we hardly could gather uh, 10 families, not even 10 families. We, this is, we're talking about 10, 30 years back. Uh, 30, uh, so at that time, there were only a few people. So that time, we haven't thought about uh, global citizen and globalization and all. That was not to talk at all at that time. So at that time, we had a few meetings and I was uh, enthusiastic to celebrate Holy Mass because I was a priest and uh, there's no hope in, uh, in Ireland, the government, to celebrate Mass. So when I found few people, our people, we started thinking of uh, starting a congregation. Though. Of course, there were very few little ones and all, nothing, know nothing about Malayalam and all. So they only know English. So we don't have much of the English uh, version of anything at that time. So uh, when we had a serious meeting, I 
argued with one uh, young man. He was a bank manager. Uh, he was married. And uh, when I uh, told him, I'm leaving to the United States for further studies. So you have to you have to continue this congregation here because with ten people uh, and uh, and uh, and there is another priest coming to Dublin for uh, high studies. And so I thought that priest will take over. And uh, some of the members were not that uh, hopeful to continue. And uh, what I am trying to say is that what struck me and. Uh, very much disappointed with one uh, one language that gentleman used. He remained, this is a dying church. This is a dying church. You're not going to survive in the UK, in, in London. This is a dying church. And this man, I'm, I'm not sure whether he's watching this, uh, this man is also an altar boy in, in Anglican Church. That's, I, I cannot blame him because. Uh, that is the way it is, because we, we don't have a regular mass there, so normally people go, uh, they don't want to go to the Orthodox, the other group church either. So he said it's a dying church. I think that that hurts me. At that time, we couldn't even think of a global uh, scenario at all. Uh, now, we, even, if we, even if we talk about diaspora, I think uh, that, that phrase is fine, but this is a time to think globally. Uh, it's, it's a global uh, era. So our church also is, uh, we've got to look, look into things in a global perspective. So in that perspective, it is uh, very important how from that time on, we're still now, how we flourished and how we survived. That is, that is, that is something different now. In England, we have 200 plus families in London itself. So this is what happened after that. So, uh, so I think I sh it should definitely be elaborated. In my speech, I have gone through the life in these generations in various places. Like I said, uh, I was a priest in, in Bangalore, and I was. In UK, I explained that to you. I was in USA for a, a short period, and I was basically I was working as a chaplain also. I have come across many such people. When parents share their worries about the next generation in the diaspora community, I could feel the importance of the church and its relevance in the life of such people. So that 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 is very important. That is very important. But there is no doubt that the church should have a good system of spiritual education based on the tradition and the teachings of the fathers in English so that the diaspora generation continue to proclaim the faith of the parents and ancestors. I'm also aware that the way our tradition is taught in our homeland and, and, uh, and the need of our diaspora generation are different. So, there is some degree of commonalities, uh, contextuality speaking. Contextually speaking, the diaspora needs more attention. I must once again acknowledge that the mission that Orho is carrying out is so commendable in this regard. At the same time, we need more consolidated work in this area. I hope we will have uh, more discussion about such immediate needs in the proper form without uh, much delay. Um, but Matinimini, you rightly nailed nailed it. Like, you know, the church is no more a local church, it's a global church, and, you know, we need to deal with a dying church where the first generation and second generation or third generation are born in, in, in respective countries respective cultures are no more coming back to the church or or maybe dissociated from the church so we need to renew um, the spirituality that has been given to us that we experience that has been uh, a cherishing point to our fathers and mothers uh, so we need to translate and contextualize 
uh, these hidden pearls, as you rightly said. Um, so I am supposed to give an update on the future activities of Uroho, maybe for the next one year. What you are going to see is more participation from the laity, more collaboration. Um, so there will be new people joining the leadership as well. There will be new positions that will be open and we'll be inviting more people to join this ministry as evangelists of Uroho the way and uh, the, the existing leadership, they will continue their roles with additional responsibilities. And one of the key things that, um, you know, the Uroho wants to take up for, for the next one year is something like a faith simplified series. How can we translate these complex things in a simple way that is being understood for the generations, the new generations, for the youngsters? How can we make this digestible, acceptable to the young generation without diluting the essence, without making any compromise to the essence of what uh, our spirituality, what our faith is. At the same time, how can we simplify uh, the faith? Something like Orthodoxy 101, why I love my Orthodox Church. Uh, so the viewers will be able to see more of this sort in the coming uh, year. And we try to um, start working on some in-person, um, I mean, you know, more personalized ministry rather than just keeping a virtual, uh, virtual ministry. So there will be more people um, uh, participating in such activities like a, a, a more, more physical mission rather than just being in the virtual space. So these are some of the highlights that I would like to um, say about the future activities. Many, we would like to hear from you. What are your advices, your scholarly advice, the wisdom that you would like to share with the, uh, the missionaries of Uroho or, and uh, for all similar platforms like Haimunutho? So what is your advice? What is your scholarly advice in continuing this kind of mission? As far as I have gone through the previous programs of Uroho, one thing I appreciate about your whole team is the academic quality that you have maintained throughout the program. At the same time, I must say that such programs can be digested to only to a particular category of people. I think that may need to change. That is one area we need to look into it. In future, I would say that you should aim to have programs that are easily understandable to the common folk. Spirituality has different dimensions. It's not the prayer and meditation itself. It has to have actions through the spiritual nourishment. That does not mean that you should compromise the current pattern of academic programs. That is very important as well. What I mean is that along with such programs, you must schedule programs aimed to a common or simple audience, as a civic spirituality is categorized as a simple one. If you if we can relate much to the youth and family and elderly people, sick people, uh, abandoned people, and the needy. And there is a lot of section of people in and around us. So uh, our spirituality need to be looked into different perspective and whatever way we can expose and express and uh, witness the spirituality in different areas of human life in, in, in general. So that's the way we could definitely give a different dimension to the uh, Syriac spirituality. Uh, I, I think that is, that is uh, 
important as well, without losing its uh, essence and the real spirit, and also uh, keeping the academic uh, quality. Thank you, Vilipa Thirumeni. I think uh, it is almost we are uh, coming to a one hour journey today. And thank you so much for your time. Maybe I'll just have a concluding uh, question, uh, which we would all, the audience also would uh, like to listen uh, from your eminence. Uh, we have covered almost all the aspects of our uh, life of Uraho. Uh, with our experience, even uh, Father Dr. Benjamin Matthew, he's, uh, he's leading the youth and he has a youth parish even in the in the USA, and also uh, me, uh, myself being uh, even teaching at the university, uh, one of the one of the key points that I just pressed in my my thesis itself is fathers are not dead. This is my key word always I tell, and therefore we need uh, this to be disseminated today, and also contemporarily we have to interpret with the with the uh, the, the situations and the context of our world. And Thirumeni has covered all these aspects. And now we know that we have diaspora youth. And also we are lucky and fortunate to have you here with us because you, you have connection to all our dioceses across the world, the Universal Syrian Orthodox Church. And particularly, we are thankful to our His Holiness, our Patriarch, and even uh, our uh, Indian uh, uh, spiritual leader, our, uh, yeah, His Beatitude, Catholicos, and all the bishops, and we had uh, our Bishop Eminence uh, Timotheus Thirumeni, our Afran Thirumeni, our Bishop Dionysius Kawa Thirumeni, all of them came, and many priests who, who all shared with us time, and uh, many other, other, other leaders. But now at this time, maybe we'll ask a concluding question, we would ask you, Thirumeni, how would we connect all these people together? How would you be able to highlight us? Is there any way that uh, we can bring people, collaborate together, global mission. Uh, and that, that's why we would, uh, probably with which we would also help as, a, as a, a small unit of our church to continue our mission, uh, uh, whatever way possible. And then what are your vision that we can connect all these missions together across the globe? I think it's a very important mission you have taken up. It's a global mission. It's an academic platform. It has a lot to contribute in the area of spirituality. It has the task of spreading the Syriac spirituality uh, to the global citizen. It has a responsibility, it has taken the responsibility to, to give the world the richness and the hidden pearls of our Syrian Orthodox Church. So we say it's a it's a great uh, enormous amount of responsibility you have taken. I am sure that there's a lot of pain behind the people working behind, taking your time off and do all the research and uh, and get things to the people in in, 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 in different different uh, areas of people uh, and should be and you need to be uh, acceptable and uh, appreciable to all people because there are a lot of lot of people a uh, lot of faithful people in our church and also those who are watching this uh, as i said earlier uh, in the uh, in the beginning or in the during the session uh, i would love to quote saint Irenaeus uh, what he said about prayer I always quote that in my speeches and all. Uh, he, he said that prayer is not what you do in your life. Prayer is what you do with your life. I think this is, this is very important. I think this, this interpretation about prayer by Saint Irenaeus is, is very much uh, related to the Syriac spirituality. So it is more important that what we do with our life. So I don't want to go in depth of what Saint Irenaeus uh, said, but relating to the, the, the Syriac spirituality, keep this in mind is very important. 
if you ask me why you should do further find people who are doing similar work and take new steps associate with the church more on the official way so that even the church can contribute towards the mission that you're doing right now i think there could be uh, there is a, there is a lot of possibility scope and space to collaborate with our uh, universal Sikh or the church community uh, mainly english speaking people uh, i think in america uh, and new zealand australia and canada uh, i think this guys for as a good number of english speaking uh, community i think because your our media is english uh, it is very much important to connect with all this diaspora all this community together because we being part of the university in north russia and particularly in the uh, malangala church suriya corporate church outside india is directly under the uh, jurisdiction of his holiness and the metropolitans appointed by his holiness is the patriarch of vikas so in in europe uh, particularly in uh, in uk and ireland and uh, australia and new zealand america and canada these are the places or other places where the english speaking people uh, could definitely be part of this uh, or for the way and uh, and uh, you could explore more and more and more and uh, uh, let us together uh, glorify the church and uh, we look into the future of our church in that perspective so that we can we can find more people associated with the church more on the official way i when i spoke to holiness uh, during a senior session a uh, few days back uh, more and was appreciating some of the uh, platforms we have uh, religious platforms church platforms uh, but moran was saying that there is a channel live channel from uh, lebanon i think and uh, sri channel uh, and they do the televised english also uh, i use once there in the studio it's a full fledged channel and uh, they are not getting much about what is happening in in, in india and moran was asking that you send some programs send the malayalam boli uh, korogo and uh, some speeches and all the people know no matter whether it's malayalam or not so people get the taste what i is like that when 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 he celebrate he does uh, say in sorry he does say in arabic he does say in, uh, in, in malayalam if it is a hindi speaking place he will, he will definitely say in hindi in hindi as well uh, that is the spirit of uh, our more and patria so he was asking us to uh, make use of that platform as well so what i'm trying to say is that there are a lot of platforms like that. there are um, like television from from sweden and from germany and from lebanon this these are the areas we could uh, we could we could um, uh, bring to people the universality of our church and the strength of our church and the, the younger people younger people in the new diaspora and in this diaspora there are the people we we got to we got to give more attention that is that is very very much important in this changing world and i'm sure that uh, this um uh, spiritual drive uh, this sri akapur spiritual spiritual drive and its uh, uh, promotion of the sri spirituality is something a spiritually uh, awakened event i would say it's a spiritually awakened event i would say and i i must say that the the the, the fathers the fathers and mothers of our church holy fathers and mothers of church definitely they will pray for the uh, for the functioning of this uh, beautiful platform uh, and, and i wish the very best to roho and its team reach out to entire diaspora community who live in new zealand as i said i live in america canada and other english speaking countries like the persons scholars and theologians of our church 
You also need to find our future scholars and also simple visionaries through the platform. Like we say, the way we need a lot of young people to continue to take up the legacy of our church on the one hand, and also to live in this faith and share it to the whole world uh, on, on, on the other. So um, thank you, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Uh, I was uh, I was telling uh, Jacob about this. I'm not Jacob Joseph. Uh, I'm glad that Joseph is there with your name. And I was I told him that I I was not very interested. I'm not very interested I, because uh, because it's a scholarly platform. I believe myself. I am not a scholar. I told him. Uh, I'm, honestly, I'm not a scholar. But when I look into the work you do, uh, my presence and my face and my simple thoughts will definitely uh, will definitely uh, be with you, and I will continue uh, to promote your uh, endeavor in whatsoever manner I could, uh, and I, I I offer you my praise and my support uh, to your continuing uh, effort to. Uh, to, to, to different uh, areas of uh, uh, this platform. So thank you very much, and uh, God bless you. And I thank you, uh, people, those who are associating with the platform, the priests and the laymen and the, the scholars. Uh, it, it's, it's very, very, very uh, important, and it's very appreciable. And and I feel proud of you uh, for uh, for taking this venture. Thank you very much and, and, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Tirumeni, so for the, the support and the spiritual leadership that you are giving us. Uh, we appreciate and we pray for you. Um, so, you know, it's almost one hour and 20 minutes. Um, so that's such a blessing that, you know, you could be with us and bless us on the occasion of our uh, first year anniversary. And we look forward to collaborating with you, seeking your blessings and prayers as well. And at this point, I would like to uh, express um, a formal thank you on behalf of Oroho the Way uh, to His Eminence, uh, our Metropolitan Trustee, um, who is leading the Malangara Church in the right direction and in the right path. So um, we'll keep you in our prayers as well. And thank you, Saji uh, for leading the discussion today. Uh, and thank you all the viewers and all the well-wishers of Oroko, whether your, your participation or your collaboration is small or big, in whatever way you, know, you are, keep us, keep this mission, mission in your prayers, uh, try to associate with we welcome more people, especially the laity and clergy, to be part of this mission. Uh, so you can uh, send us an email, visit the web website, or go to you know any of the social media platforms like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Just just keep us um, in, in your prayers and keep in touch. So we'll collaborate more, uh, work towards disseminating the love of God, which we experience. Uh, through the Syriac Orthodox Church uh, and its ministry and mission. Uh, so, through many, uh, may I request you to uh, uh, offer the benediction so that we can conclude this session. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful session. We thank you for having this platform. And we particularly we thank you for holding these priests and people also working for the for this platform so that our church should be glorified, so that our holy fathers and mothers' writings will be reread, and we believe and pray that through these letters and writings, they will talk to us. They are not dead people, they are still alive within us through their writings. 
Lord Almighty, we believe that church belongs to you. And we are the members of the church destined to work for the glory of the kingdom of God. Each and every work we do is for the betterment of the world and for the entire human being. So let there be peace and prosperity and happiness and healing. It happens in and around the world. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are caught up in the pandemic calamity. We pray for those who lost their life. We pray for those who are in the hospital. We pray for those who are working, serving for the sick and the people admitted in the hospital. Pray for people, those who are in the field of medic medical field. So, Lord, we hope and pray that you will overcome this pandemic time as well. Hold us together in your hand to give us strength and courage to go through this crisis time. So let us pray together that God will strengthen us to continue our work for the glory of God and for the glory of our church. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. God bless you. Thank God you. bless you all those who are viewing this program. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.